to build your own RepRap. And right now you can buy one, but um, that's only because people can't print them out fast enough. The RepRap is actually able to print out all of the uh, white plastic pieces, and you can buy the threaded rod at any hardware store. So it's pretty accessible technology. Uh, this is version two of the RepRap, and it's a lot smaller. But the reason I include both of these is that you have to keep in mind there's not a single definite design for one uh, tool. A lot of people, when you have open source hardware, you can invent your own or change something a little bit, like maybe I want a uh, faster extruder than someone else, and I'm willing to make a trade off. Uh, so, in order to facilitate people distributing their own uh, designs and modifications, we've gone with a distributed revision control system. So, on the left, you have uh, CVS, which is typical. Everyone uploads their file to a central server, and this fails politically because someone has to have the keys to the server, whereas with, with a distributed revision control system, everyone has their own copy of the entire database. So if you're sharing all these designs, uh, anyone can publish whatever they want and they don't have to get permission first. Uh, this is a stepper driver from the RepRap project and it's useful in a lot of other projects like, for example, a CNC milling machine, even though it wasn't designed for it. So a lot of these uh, tools are, the bits from the tools are useful in, in other unexpected situations. Uh, the RepRap makes uh, timing poles. These cost like 20 bucks each, but they're free. Uh, you can make gears, and we can now do this pretty much automatically. Uh, you tell it how many teeth you want, and it spits it out. Uh, Someone is working on making a T-slot system. Uh, T-slot is fairly expensive, even though it's very convenient, and we want to just like make our own dies to extrude the aluminum. Uh, but there's, of course, more old-fashioned methods of doing the same thing. Uh, this is a, a hack, uh, two scanners with a CDR laser diode. You can actually laser cut paper using thrown away junk. Uh, for example, this trefoil knot on the top is uh, a taped together version of the weird looking dragon thing on the bottom. And so you can download, you can download a 3D model of this and automatically unfold it, print it out, laser cut it, and then fold it back up again and, and you have your 3D model. Uh, okay, so a lot of that was like weird fabrication technology, but there's much more pedestrian basic, uh, you know, common everyday items that you would need if you couldn't just go to Walmart and buy it. Uh, so one example is construction equipment. Well, a lot of construction equipment is very expensive uh, it's special purpose, and you only own construction equipment if you run a construction company. Well, what if we open source the design uh, immediately by putting more functionality into the same device, it becomes more economical to own. And so this thing can dig holes and it can run uh, a brick making press. And uh, there's a lot more reason to own it now that it's more functional. Uh, this is a disaster housing, the Hexa Yurt. Uh, a lot of people brought this to Burning Man, which is a kind of a disaster, I think. Uh, it's just taped together styrofoam. <laughs> uh, a group in Denmark makes uh, buildings out of short pieces of stainless steel angle iron. And so you can make a boat out of this stuff, or the house on the right is made out of the same stuff and this is a view inside of the house. And they have a very modular uh, interlocking philosophy of, of hardware. All the hardware kind of plays well together. And so this is the kind of, you know, plays nice that we're trying to, to cultivate and put it all together in a system that just works. Uh, this is a chair made out of the same material. And uh, I don't really know why I included this slide. It's a house you can carry along with you. <laughs> Uh, this is called a pillow dome. It's a very old design uh, by Buckminster Fuller, and you can pack it up and put it in a suitcase, basically. Uh, so it changes a lot of political structures. Uh, hy hydroponic plant pot that was printed out on RepRap. 
Uh, this is a rope pump. It's made out of cups and rope tied together. Uh, you just have to know how to do this, otherwise you wouldn't know how to do it, and so we're trying to share the information. Uh, you can make a highly efficient stove and boil some tea in your Utah teapot uh, and have some chocolates you made in your chocolate mold. Uh, really simple stuff like containers and snappy clips and paper clips and cable clips and handlebar clips and tarp clips. <laughs> this is a special kind of clip. It was made by the Open Prosthetics Project. It's called a Troutman hook. They made them in the 1930s and they don't make them anymore, but they're very useful if you don't have an arm. Uh, and someday soon we'll be able to print out functional organisms, or at least parts of them, using tissue culture. Uh, this is the Open EEG project. You can scan your brain, uh, something like that. Uh, this guy has ALS disease and he's paralyzed. And a very simple design, you just have two webcams watching your eyes and some special software and then now all of a sudden he can write and draw and communicate with people. Uh, this camera is uh, completely open source all the way down to the sensor and so you can do low level uh, algorithms and analyze them in real time. Or another project is make your own UAV, uh, optical high speed data link, this is what it looks like. Uh, Todd made a lot of these, I think. Uh, it's a point-to-point -point radio link. You can make it out of any kind of trash. Uh, this thing's just weird, but <laughs> pretty high tech, and you can download all the source. Um, a smartphone that's actually got into production. Uh, FPGA-based radio. You can pretend to be any kind of wireless device and download the software for them. Uh, this is a scanning tunneling microscope made out of consumer electronic junk. Uh, an open graphics card, like a 3D acceleration card, multi-touch interface. It goes on and on. Lasers projected on clouds. Arduino is a <coughs> microcontroller. You can do sensing and control of pretty much anything. Multi-purpose computers. This is what I'm going to make a wearable computer out of. Uh, run your car. Make your own MP3 player. Uh, this is the first hardware I actually downloaded and printed out. It's a circuit board for programming other circuits. Probably not too useful for most people, but it's useful if you're making open hardware. Uh, cell phone jammer, a pulse jet, uh, fusion <laughs> reactor, <laughs> another generator, solar powered air conditioner, and this is just a solar collector. So there's a whole bunch of stuff out there and we have to group it together in the general uh, categories so that, you know, then we can say, okay, what do you do with all this stuff? Well, we can use our fabrication tools to make better sensors and then use our sensors to make better controllers and with better control we can have better fabrication facilities. So this cycle repeats itself. You have a positive feedback loop of technology development uh, and that's really just for the best. I think that's what transhumanism is about. It's about modifying the substrate you're running on and the tools you use. Um, yeah, so uh, in order to get this going, we want to have you help us. Uh, you people on the internet who are watching are probably more likely to have a good idea and contribute to what we're trying to do. So if you have a, uh, is Open Manufacturing on here? Well, if you have a, an idea for a project, you should contact the Open Manufacturing list at openmanufacturing.org and Tell us what you'd like to do. Um, you can download the software here, and I think that's about it. So are there any questions? <laughs>